Welcome in. Spocast time on a Monday night. Uh, quite the video there. Happy uh, Spo show week uh, out there. Somehow we're now into the middle of February. And this is episode 13, Funeral for a Friend. <laughs> Rob Sanderson, Johnny Cashmere, Tommy Grayson, Big 80s Donnie B. Gentlemen, what's going on? Well, I'd just like going, to man? say first and foremost... That was awesome, that video. I love the stuff that Spo Wrestling is doing, those little kind of videos like that. I really didn't – I'm not too familiar with those two gentlemen. I know they're up-and-coming talents, but now I want to see more of them. And uh, I'm one of the few people on Earth, at least in this group, who was actually online putting quarters into that machine when it came out in 1993. I can remember the day that arcade – that machine showed up in an arcade. There was a line. I'm no bullshit. Probably 40 to 50 people deep. With quarters in their hand, they'd put your initials on your quarter and you'd stack them up top of the game and you would stay there for hours playing that game. And it was like uh, you had to keep whoever won did move on and take on the next challenger and all that shit. It was awesome, dude. That was the yep. fun old days of the arcade, brother. I'm one of the few that actually mm. put money into an original MK2. Bro, people don't realize how scarce it was to have games. Like now you can have a game and sit in your house and play it for a day. We had to wait in line and put in a quarter and have a limited time to play. And after a few deaths, you couldn't play anymore. Like you never got no, to fully to scratch on. the itch, did you? No, Donkey Kong. I I'm one of those guys. When you watch the King of Kong with, with uh, Billy Mitchell and all those guys, Steve Weeby, like I was in the Donkey Kong craze. Pac-Man really wasn't my jam. It was more Donkey Kong. But, uh, bro, I'm a kid of the 80s. I mean, we went to arcades. That's where people hung out. Um. My daughters will never know that, dude. It's kind of sad, actually. It's a different world now. What's favorite yeah. video game of all time, everybody? Pick one. Are we talking? I'll throw one out there that I'll get that uh, nobody will agree with. Uh, Diddy Kong Racing for N64. You're right. <laughs> I, yeah, nobody's going to agree with that. And everybody's going to say Mario Kart's better, but I disagree. Um, I also felt mm. like the only kid in the world that didn't play Mortal Kombat back in the day. Um, I mean, I had all the wrestling games and stuff like that, but for some reason, that was like the one really popular one that I never got into. I'm going to say only Link's person. Awakening. Zelda, Zelda, the first Zelda for Super Nintendo. Link's Awakening, I think it was called. That was my favorite. Tommy? Uh, I like, uh, I'm a big Mortal Kombat guy, but I, I would have to say my favorite uh, home console game, I love Mario 64. That's my all-time favorite. I would say... There's an old game called either Frontline or hmm, Double Dragon was pretty badass. Or yeah, they, they, uh, those are tied. But believe it or not, my favorite and I'm not a huge video game guy anymore. I just I, I, they're beyond my scope. <laughs> I'm not good at them. But uh, my favorite video game series of all time was on PlayStation. It's called Uncharted, the Uncharted mm. games. I remember those Uncharted. Awesome, man. Yeah, those are my favorites of, of, of any game I ever played. And that Last of Us game was pretty cool, too. 
That was yes. pretty wild. My buddy turned me on to that. But I'm not into like these games that take like fucking a year to play and you role play and you have to buy shit in the game and skins and, and weapons. It's a lost art from not... back in the day when we could just pick up a controller and be competitive with our oh, friends. Oh, God. Now, like, you can't just randomly play Madden with somebody because they're just going to destroy you because they know eight million tricks and yeah, yeah and they bought things something. to make their character better and all that and give me a regular nes pro wrestling game give me star man versus a piranha man what just happened what is this whoop sorry i didn't mean to add that in just yet i apologize oh look at the photo well, we can Talk jump about into what's it. on screen yeah we could jump into it in just a moment but uh we were actually um while we were uh going over plans for the show tonight we were uh discussing the upcoming week and uh the previous week that we had and uh i don't know if anyone had noticed but jp and myself had actually taken a uh trip up to toronto midweek and got to wrestle aew's uh colt cabana and brandon cutler for the jewish tag team championships it was the first match of its kind um you know so have a little highlight video and uh when we get uh situated a little bit or we could uh we could play it now what do you guys think i say go for it. it yeah go for it. hell yep. yeah all righty this was uh made by yours truly and let's do it up I don't think it's playing. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, I would remove it. Yeah, it's just something's wrong with the connection. Oh, you can just <clears> tell <throat> us what happened. Moving right along. Well, they did beat us, but nonetheless, they beat us with kosher salt, which we originally had the advantage on them of. We had a canter that came out and blessed the entire match. We raised over $90,000 for the Rena Rumble, uh, wow. which was the event that, wow. you know, yeah, it all went to, uh, you know, special needs children out there. And, you know, it was just it was it was truly a sight to behold. So, you know, that's awesome. Big man. shout out Did to. You... Was that yeah. the first time you guys had met Colt? Uh, we had been on a few shows with uh, Colt in the past. That was our first time meeting Brandon Cutler. Um, but our first time working with them and, uh, you know, stand up guys, complete professionals, um, you know, can't say enough good about, you know, the both of them uh you know Colts, both of them yeah johnny did you ever you did shows with colt you must have yeah yeah i remember him from back in the day he was always fun great guy yeah absolutely. just a true journeyman a true professional uh a lot of young talent could learn from a guy like colt never gave up always been relevant in the business made his own way when there wasn't a way you know he cut the path in front of him he took that weed whacker and went right through the tall grass and made his own path uh, yeah. with merchandise and the t-shirts and everything. I would love to see AEW do more with him. I know he does a lot behind the scenes, but, uh, you know, I don't get into any of that shit with him and punk and all that dumb shit. I can just tell you how I, I remember getting VHS tapes when I was running PCW from Colt. It was a match with him and punk and they wanted to come out. I just couldn't afford their trans and to bring them out from Chicago or else I would have, um, I remember just a great guy. I, I like Colt Cabana a lot. Uh, I wish nothing but the best for him. I don't know Brandon Cutler, but if he's cut from the same cloth as uh, Mr. Cabana, that's cool by me. So good to see you guys getting in the ring. You only gonna, bro, iron sharpens iron. So you and JP now are at the point where you guys got to start working talents that are on your level or above just to get better. Johnny will tell you that. Johnny and Trent only got better when they worked with guys like Kazarian and Nova and, uh, you know, Daniels and all these other guys, man. That's how they got better. You don't punch yeah. down. Yeah. Uh... Mm hmm. No, it uh, it it definitely was a was a learning experience. I'm thankful for it, and you know, I like like you said, you know, you only get better by wrestling guys that are better than you. And uh, you know, I'm up for any and all challenges. So uh, it was it was really a a good way to kind of you know test myself, see where I'm at, and you know, I'm looking forward to more. So uh, you know, great nice. experience. Was that your first entrance with Pyro? uh definitely with the bill goldberg pyro so uh you know more more bill goldberg pyro at, at at shows i'm all about that nice yeah it's a nice little touch there um yeah you have to wonder i mean how different a lot would be in the wrestling world right now without 
that entrepreneurship of Colt Cabana specifically. I mean, the absolutely the, everything's changed so much in terms of merch and the availability, like the print on demand stuff, all that. I mean, it's a different world than it was 10, 20 years ago and stuff. And and obviously he did a lot too with the like kind of getting podcasting going more in the wrestling. Right, he's one of the so, originals. Yeah. People yeah. always put over Jericho as one of the originals, but no, it's actually a, Colt. I'm not sure who's first. Yeah, Colt's definitely a pioneer. Uh you know, he figured all this shit out, man, from scratch. He didn't have any instruction book. Well, you know what it is, it too, Don? You know what it is, too? He's confident in his charisma. Yeah. So he doesn't need to be rehearsed. He doesn't need to rehearse. Like, he's so good with ad-libbing that you can just put a camera on him and you're going to get something good at any point of the day. Another one of these guys, much like Sonny Kiss, and I told her last week, uh, it just boggles my mind how somebody can't figure out how to make money with Colt Cabana on a Main Street platform on a weekly basis, whether it's WWE, AEW, where it is. I, I, I don't know. I don't get it. I just, I'm flabbergasted that some of these guys, you have a talent in front of you, you could be drawing money with and making money and they're just sitting there. Hmm. Mm. Whatever. Yeah. I mean, I sit and rack my brains all the time about how to help get other people over. It's not always just get yourself over. Sometimes, like you said, you sharpen your own skills when you think about how I, would I get another person over, you know? Yeah. I don't know. No, you're right, dude. But so um, the Batman of Burlington is going to appear. I think I told you guys that before. Let me real quick just show you the slideshow and, and we'll get it done. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. So so we're going to have the uh, the rep tomorrow, tomorrow or the next day, probably probably tomorrow, or the next day on, on IG. So when you see us on Instagram live, we're going to be uh, interviewing these guys. Can't wait. Um, so the boss battles coming up this Sunday, guys, still some tickets left. Some GA tickets uh, remain. Um, and for every broken door in the door match, we're going to give away a, a gaming console to someone who had bought tickets in advance. And that's Ooh. Killdozer versus the Wrecking Ball. And that's Batman of Burlington. So kids, the Batman's going to be there. So come out and see him. Uh, he's always at all the Burlington events. Everyone knows him. And in a little bit, we're going to have MLJ. He's going to be on uh, maybe in about a half hour, 20 minutes. We're going to talk to him about his history and his time in GCW. And uh, here's the event. Big match is signed. Me and Zandig versus Face and Decker. Homicide, first ever title defense against Sonny Kiss. The, the two out of three doors match. The women's match for the inaugural women's title. Rebecca Scott versus Christina Marie. Rematch by popular demand. Bufa Ayo all the way from China versus Lucky 13. The big four-way scramble match. Silk City Kings, Golden Era. Backseats, The Rep. Pat Dynamite's debut, Joe Clean and Live Danger back by popular demand. And as mentioned, MLJ. Thank you for indulging me. Tickets at spowrestling.com. Yeah, man, this is a perfect weekend before the storm of WrestleMania and all that, everything else going on. Valentine's Day is this Wednesday. Uh, they make some perfect gift for wrestling tickets. Get your honey some uh, wrestling tickets for this, this weekend show. Uh, no better value than Spo Wrestling tickets right now. You guys are That's on the lips and the ears of everyone. I love what you guys are doing. The creativity. Just keep it up. Uh, it's going to be awesome, man. I, I can't wait to see it. Thank you, brother. And Thank the keyword you there, the advanced tickets uh, for the eligibility for those prizes. Yes. So. That's right. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, it's been a busy week, obviously, uh, again, in wrestling news. Uh, this whole 2024 has been crazy in wrestling. Obviously, we had the Super Bowl yesterday as well, but um I, the scott demore news took me by surprise um mm. it seems like i don't know me will this be the week where we just kind of have a casual week in the world of national pro wrestling or something else around the corner business right. cash <laughs> yeah. it's turbulent yeah, it's turbulent man. insanity uh we could get into scott stuff later on a little bit uh just briefly i did speak to scott demore i text him afterwards and he texted me back and, uh, you know, some good words of encouragement. It'll re remain between him and I. I like Scott. I've known Scott for 20 plus years. He'll land on his feet. People don't notice, but he does real estate and stuff on the side. So, like, TNA was his passion. You can I tell. just hope. I have a funny feeling they'll be sold at some point. I think that was one of the things they were doing, maybe line up for a sale. I don't know. But I would love to see Scott as the one who winds up with it eventually. I Interesting. think if he got full control. And he got the reins. 
I think they'd be much better off. Um, so we'll see what happens. I like Scott. I'm Scott yeah, Demorgan. same here. Always uh, good interactions with him and yep. wish him the best with that. I it, The news totally caught me off guard, and I just think it's a shame because that company, for how many ups and downs they've had in the last 22 years, like just felt like Anthem kind of shooting themselves in the foot there with this past month just getting so much attention, so many people tuning back in for the first time in years or whatever, and and now this happens. And, and every post you look at from TNA now is just negative comments from people that yep. – it's all it's all about Scott and bring him back or I'm not watching and stuff like that. So uh, you can pro see the Rob, you know, this pro wrestling has a very weird thing where it shoot seems to shoot itself in the foot whenever it's doing good or if the road, the road is nice and smooth. Somebody comes along and screws it up, whether it be when they turned Austin heel in oh one or whatever it was or anything mm -hmm. going good. All of a sudden, somebody steps up and does something so stupid. and You go, what the shit? Like that's exactly what happened here at TNA. They were had a bunch of goodwill. They curried favor with the fans. They were on the upswing, and all of a sudden they go do something like this. You go up two steps, and then you get knocked down three. That's yep. the story mm -hmm. of pro wrestling. But Donnie, what about the days when we watched wrestling when I was a kid, where you didn't know who a booker was and who was running yes. a show, and you didn't need to know if he was installed or taken out? Why? You know what I mean? Don't know. I uh, uh, I heard. Was Paulie? Somebody said that years ago. Like, I don't understand when the stuff behind the curtain becomes more prevalent than the stuff in the ring. That's when you have an issue. Like right now, yeah. the stuff in the ring in WWE is so red hot than the stuff behind the curtain. Whereas in AEW, the stuff behind the curtain is more important and more drama filled than the stuff in the ring. So whenever you do that, the ring will equal ticket sales. The back will e equal fucking clicks on the internet. You just remember yeah. it like that. In the ring equals tickets. In the back equals clicks. Clicks don't equal money, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Well, and at least but. WWE uh, corrected the decision to have the Royal Rumble winner just hand over his WrestleMania main event. <laughs> oh, oh, you can have it. No worries. I, I didn't Yeah, care. we'll get into that. And like, to me, that's the least logical thing that's ever been done in ever. wrestling. What? <laughs> but luckily, they corrected it. I mean, the same type of thing you're talking about. Then... You know, they had that uh, press conference, which was unique. And I thought everybody did really well with that. I mean, it seemed very believable uh, throughout it, which was really important. Then a couple days later, you know, like Rock's responding to somebody online. And he's like, this this is when I turned heel. It's something we do in wrestling. Stuff. I'm like, you don't have to like go. Yeah, that I route. thought that was like, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I mean, we, we know the deal, but like you don't you, you have to leave that sense of trying to buy into something i don't know i don't like those reminders i guess but um it definitely i mean they've corrected things and there's a lot of momentum there um so and obviously AEW's got things around the corner too that they're pushing and stuff too so it, i mean it's a big time for for indie wrestling and for for national wrestling yeah. and stuff for sure it is it um, is hopefully well, tna could find a way to keep up <laughs> at this time if i might so indulge uh, today we promoted that tonight was going to be a funeral for a friend and allow me <laughs> some self-indulgence if you would I don't do this very often but I'm going to do it tonight I'm going to call Booker's pencil right now uh, what I would like to do is to take this opportunity first and foremost to acknowledge the fact that I was the one who indeed on my former show which was called potting with the pundits uh, we had a weekly football show it was started by the great Dave Sturgio Jamie Silverberg was our host my partner in crime was Raleigh Allen, and we obviously had me, and we had Mike Bucci as well, Simon Dean Supernova. And Mike Bucci, as we all know, has a penchant for the macabre, and he likes to put himself over constantly. <laughs> and he was the one who, at the beginning of the year last year, we went out, and we all did our picks, and we had to make our prognostications for the year. And lo and behold, Mike and Dave, they're diehard Cowboy fans, so I get it. But Mike Bucci went on the line, and he swore up and down that at the end of the at the end of the season, at the end of the Super Bowl, and he has a rant. It's in episode one. You guys can go download and listen to it. That he swore Ooh. that the Dallas Cowboys would be hosting the Lombardi Trophy over the Cincinnati Bengals. When it came time for yours truly, myself and Raleigh, we both picked the Kansas City Chiefs. Now Raleigh picked the Kansas City Chiefs over the Philadelphia Eagles. What did I do? I picked the Kansas City Chiefs over the San Francisco 49ers. And I even went a step further. I took them 31 to 25. Now, I didn't get the score right, 
But throughout the entire season, I never waved. I never changed. I stood in there. Every playoff game, I guessed almost the exact score. I was right every single time. So tonight, I would like, as our special guest, to bring in a gentleman who shares the same school of thought as I, a co-pundit of mine from the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome making his Spocast debut, the one and only, the stallion, Raleigh Allen. There he is. (sighs) Gentlemen, thank you for having me on. (laughs) Absolutely. Now, Raleigh, allow me. You know Johnny. You know Tommy and JP. Rob is our host. I just want to extend this invite to you and tell you what a treat it is for me to have you on here tonight as a fellow pundit. And just I'm going to give you a few minutes, Raleigh, to just tell these guys some of the lunacy, some of the claims that good old Mike made. And let's just let's treat this as some more piles of dirt that were thrown onto his grave tonight. Well, I've always been the one to say that being a Dallas Cowboy fan is a mental illness. And your brother solidifies that fact every time he opens his mouth or touches his keyboard to go on Facebook. Um, it's, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Mike hasn't learned that yet. Um, from his re- every year's their year, they haven't been relevant in almost 30 years, but every year next year is going to be their year. And every year it's the same old stuff. Sh- can I curse? <laughs> it's sure. old, we can work. Same old, <laughs> it's, oh, it's the same old, <laughs> it's the same old bullshit with Mike. Uh, oh, this is our year. It's a special year. Uh, this, that, this, that. Uh, he, he's just delusional. This year, Dak was the surefire MVP after four games. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys were a lock for the Super Bowl. Uh, it just insanity. Uh, absolute insanity. Uh, Mike claims all the time that the Cowboys are the best. And the biggest thing is he's a New Jersey guy. I know he lives in Kentucky now, but he's a New Jersey guy. How do you become a Cowboys fan living in New Jersey? where the Cowboy fans don't even accept you. And Dave Sergio is just a sick, but we'll keep on on Mike. Uh, one of the, like, and he has no football not much. He thinks he does. Mike can, regurg- Mike can regurg to take Dallas Cowboy stats because he's had 30 years to know. Five, five, five. Well, you know what? If you had sex 25 years ago, it doesn't mean you're good at sex now. You know, probably you're a little bit rusty. It's the same with the Cowboys. They suck. They're irrelevant. And they I think really- it's been longer than that, yeah. Yeah, it's closer to 30. But, uh, I, think sex. I think that's why he hasn't had sex in 25 years. I think that's why he can relate with the Cowboys. So, <laughs> I believe Good this clown sex. actually in the beginning of the year, and his quote was that the NFL now had tape on Brock Purdy and he was going to become irrelevant and they were yeah. not going to win the division and they weren't even going to make the playoffs. <laughs> Well, you know, that's a, that's a bold prediction by Mike because the NFL only had tape on Brock Purdy. They didn't have it on Doc Prescott or Jalen no. Hurts. The only NFL quarterback that the NFL teams had tape on was Brock Purdy. And it was going to see a significant, you know, regression this year. Eh, sorry, Mike, shut up. And, uh, you know, uh, they weren't going to miss Zeke. Pollard was going to be an elite running back. I, I don't know about that. So, and, and in the end, what I loved is the vault of defense is what costed them any hopes of a championship. And they were one and done, like I've said all year long. They're probably going to squeak in the playoffs. They'll be one and done. And, and that's it. And I, I couldn't be happier to come to a funeral than for Mike Bucci tonight. So, yes, you know, it, it, I'm so honored to Dear, be on. And I'm so happy. Dearly beloved, we've gathered here tonight to throw dirt on the mound of this marble mouth, mullet wearing, muskrat, catcher's mitt looking goofball <laughs> who has never been right about anything that has to do with the NFL in his entire life. And the reason this is happening is because he constantly, even though he was wrong and Dallas was out, he still mustered the little Keones that he has, little bizalls, to talk shit on other people's teams and start degrading them. Like when the Eagles got bounced or Tampa, like Tampa, it was insanity. Still going out there talking shit, this goof. I mean, this cheese whiz looking face moron was out there talking this shit as if Dallas had already won. And the entire time I stood fast in my beliefs, I said the Kansas City Chiefs each fucking week. I said the Kansas City Chiefs will defeat the 49ers in the Super Bowl. and Patrick Mahomes will raise the Lombardi. It's on episode one. Raleigh agreed with me. He took against the Eagles. We made this prediction. Dave Sturchio, Mike's partner on Potting with the Pundits, had to come out yesterday and say, no, Mike, Donnie nailed this. So instead of just being a man and saying, yep, Donnie B was right, I was wrong, 
He couldn't do it. He had a, he even sank so low as to yesterday saying, yep, the Kansas City Chiefs were my pick. <laughs> no, he didn't. He, I swear to God, he did. Raleigh, go on his page. He was telling people yesterday that he picked the Chiefs to win the Super Bowl. Now, maybe he did in the game, but he flip-flopped back and forth. That's what he always did. He'd have built-in excuses with the Cowboys. He'd say, like, no matter what, win, lose, or draw, this has been a great season. Yeah, it was awesome. The Dallas Cowboys got obliterated in the first round. I mean, it was just – now, it sucks what happened to the Giants, but I didn't think Daniel Jones was going to go down in game number six and never come back. I mean, what could we do? That was terrible. Uh, you know, but I didn't I didn't pick the Giants to win the NFC. I actually picked the Eagles. But, oh, me and Raleigh were correct. But we had know, so much so, fun each week. Absolutely. And then Mike all of a sudden had to become a waiter or a, an actor in a murder mystery thing in Louisville after his capitalizing on Dancing with the Stars in Louisville where he beat four senior citizens and a weatherman. It's a true story Look it up in the DVD. Yeah, we never saw available. that video. Never saw that video, did we, Raleigh? I think he bought all the copies so that I couldn't get yeah. a, uh, a hold of I, we do have a picture of him with his frosted, stupid ass hair uh, accepting the trophy. And he literally beat four senior citizen women and one fat <laughs> weatherman. And he was putting that over as like he did something. That so was cool. Something. That, yeah, they raised money for charity. I'll, I'll acknowledge that. I'll put that over. But I'm it's just that, you know, we're, we we always have. It's just the t- tenacity that he had with constantly putting himself over with the Cowboys and just never selling it. And what, what the tipping point for me was when the Dallas Cowboys got obliterated by the 49ers and then Mike was nowhere to be found that Wednesday when we recorded. I mean, that was just despicable. He couldn't take his lumps. The mar- the people wanted to see him get his comeuppance. He didn't give him their comeback, so we had to bounce him. So that yeah, was that. It and was then horrible. We, we could, it was tough to get everybody back on the same night to record, so that's pretty much what happened to the show. But Stallion, I don't know. I'm thinking next year, a two-man football show. I think, you know what, let's just bring the real talent, which was you and I, and, yeah. and that's it. That's all we need. You know, cut the, yeah. cut the you know, trim the fat, which Get was another definitely host. your brother. Rob, Rob yeah. knows football. But, uh, yeah, it was man. so much fun, dude. It was but, great. You know, it, it hit a wall because your brother wasn't able to discuss anything outside the Cowboys. And it's like a four-year-old yep. whose favorite, like, food is chicken fingers and only wants his chicken fingers. That's what Mike is with the Cowboys. Like, there's no yep. other thing. There's no steak. There's no chicken. It's only chicken fingers, you know? So that's all Mike could discuss. And his delusion, oh, my God. Mike, I'll miss you. I've never had so much fun at a funeral. Um, rest easy, my friend. I will always make fun of you. I will always remember you with a smile on my <laughs> face because you are the biggest delusional, non-knowledgeable football person I've ever met in my life. Well, maybe if he's up with with our father up in heaven, our heavenly father, maybe he could ask <laughs> for a few pointers to throw, like, an extra pass or something this year to help the Cowboys out or something. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is this. At the beginning of the season, we all had a chance to make our predictions in re- in record, put them in stone, and I took mm-hmm. the Kansas City Chiefs over the San Francisco 49ers. And like I said, this mullet-headed, marble-mouthed moron yesterday was touting his horn, saying, oh, when they lose, blah, all this bullshit that came out of his mouth the entire year, and we buried them. <laughs> Boys, we got them. In the words of you, when they got when they got Osama bin Laden, we got him, baby. <laughs> we got him good yesterday. And I think <laughs> he still awful. owes you a couple cases, Raleigh. He does. That's the whole thing. He owes me cases, and he just like signed up. So we didn't finish the season. I'm like, we didn't finish the season because you went to do a murder mystery thing. Yep. I mean, seriously, bro. Pay your debts. Well, I think he still owes you fifty, right, Donnie? For of course he ago. does. He never paid it. That's I just. Okay. And then we okay. still sent. We did send the check to St. Jude's. For the making yeah. money with Mikey Mush. Yeah. But I do that stuff all the time. I make donations. I don't put myself over constantly that I did yeah. it. If more than two yeah. people know about something, it ain't charity. I live That's by that. Way. It's true. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, you know, we took this sad sack on with us on Potting with the Pundits. He couldn't get over. He couldn't draw money in the podcast world. And uh, <laughs> we had to jettison him. The true talent is right here. The Stallion. Jamie was great. Dave was the most knowledgeable out of all of us. Listen, Absolutely. I never claimed to be a fucking rocket science when it came to sports, and but I like podcasting. Um, I like talking. I like, you know, telling the truth and making bold predictions. And that's what yeah. I did. And I was well, right. From the outside I won a looking lot of money in, yesterday. I mean, yeah. it, the the smart thing here is like you're you were predicting the Chiefs, and you're not a Chiefs fan. Like, yeah, yeah you can be confident in your team, but like, was I going to say at the beginning of the season the Buffalo Bills were going to win the Super Bowl? Absolutely not. I don't want to jinx it. 
And I'm, I'm not confident enough. Like, I'm not putting money down. When the Temple Owls are in March Madness, I will not do a bracket for money because I'm not going to bet on them winning a national championship, and I'm not putting money down on them losing either. So I just that's back. a great that's a great point, Rob. You're absolutely right. Not only that, I didn't even pick the Giants to win the NFC East. I took the Philadelphia fucking Eagles. I took the Eagles, and then I, I, you know, did my homework, and I said, why would you bet against Patrick Mahomes? I'll say it right now on this show at 8:01 p.m. On February 12th, 2024, the Kansas City Chiefs will be the first team in NFL history to pull the three-peat. They will win the Super Bowl next year. I'm saying it right now, a year in advance. Like Rock and Cena building it up for a year, brother. A one year. Hell I'm yeah. It right now. Donnie, I right wouldn't here. bet against you. Your your track you record on, on this show, your track record's really good. I got to admit Thank that. you. Last time I made a prediction, what did we get? 127,000 views or whatever the hell it was? It broke the internet literally. Yeah, right? Yeah. Donnie, real quick, the first round of the playoffs this year, your idiot brother, he went out on a ledge and picked the team that was up by 20-something points halfway through the game. Remember that? What was that? What was that game? It was it the Texans game when he said it sure Texans was? Were- he made his pick of the Texans when they were already up by, I think, either 14 or 17. Then he picked yeah. them at the beginning of the third quarter. And he went out of real limit, <laughs> picked all the favorites that week, and then put it over like he had some knowledge. But Ooh. And he's like, Donnie and I are like watchdogs on his page. And he's still, you know, we call him out on everything. But, oh, God. What was even better was the Miami and Buffalo game when he said, <laughs> oh, Donnie B took Miami, bet the house on Buffalo. And then he went on his page and said he bet Miami. So he actually picked both teams. <laughs> and we called him out on it. He's like, no, I didn't. Uh, we put a picture up. He picked Miami and he picked Buffalo. It didn't make any sense. So oh, listen, we had a lot of fun with old Mike all year. And it was fun busting balls with him. And But I'll make a revelation on the show now. I have no interest in even doing it next year against him. I could be, mainly because, I mean, I'm sure maybe I'll throw a zinger here and there. But if I see something... But it's just, it's like beating a baby seal now with a spiked bat. <laughs> there's no offense. There's no comeback. Nothing I can do or say is going to be worse than what happened to the Dallas Cowboys this year. And I, I don't see how I could ever have a better season predicting anything than I just did. So How much of that retire on top? The Cowboys, did he blame on the referees? Oh, the my God. Post. Over. But he blamed everybody but <laughs> Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. have never lost the game in the history of the franchise. Because of their shitty play, it's always the refs, of course, in the game. Yeah, the, refs, the refs, the refs. He was sodomized by the refs. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe you under Vince. Who knows? But, oh, my gosh. But, I mean, listen, we had so much fun during the year. Like I said, yeah. he got all worked up over it. It was all in good fun. But he would just take a turn for the worse in the dark. And that's what we'll miss most about him as he lay in this yeah. earthly bed of worms. But, uh. You know, I, I hope he has – uh, maybe he'll get over in the beyond with Stevie and Meanie someday. <laughs> They'll be, meet him up there, and they could reform the BWO up in the pearly oh gates. <laughs> wrestling, <laughs> wrestling in heaven. Donnie, yeah. I, I got to say it. Stallion is over, brother. <laughs> I told you, Raleigh, the, the, the magic of potting with the pundits was Raleigh and Mike going back and forth on each other and Mike taking the big prat fall like Rocky and Bullwinkle yeah. or like yeah. the heel get bumped and see he John, would get a little bit John Tripper. Yeah, <laughs> then he would take the fall, but Mike couldn't realize that. He always he was he wanted to get over. The fans wanted to see Stallion get over on Mike. And if he would have just followed that formula, <laughs> it was foolproof cuz gotcha. Raleigh's a riot. My, I had focus groups that would listen to the show each week <laughs> and my focus groups would report back to me on who was good what was good, what worked. They kind of liked everybody, but they thought the banter, and notice I'm not saying myself, they thought the banter between Raleigh and Mike was great, and they loved to see Mike take the fall. So, I mean, it's one of those things. Raleigh, I mean, we'll definitely have him on here again. It doesn't have to be. Raleigh knows a lot about the business. He was traditionally trained. He's a Pat Buck guy. Um, He can come on whenever. We'll have him on as a regular. That's cool as long as he's up for it. Always, gentlemen, always. You seem to be a draw, brother. It's a no brainer. Raleigh's over. <laughs> Thanks for the no house, brainer. bro. So Raleigh, is there any last Raleigh? I'd like you to say a few. We're gonna get to Emil in a minute, but I'd like you to have the floor now and any kind of last minute words to the departing soul of I think I see Mike's soul 
Oh, wait, no, it's got definitely going downward. Sorry. But uh, I see his soul leaving the screen right now. Anything you'd like to say to him? No, all dogs go to heaven. So Mike will go to heaven because God looks out for, like, you know, idiots and, and animals. You know? So, Mike, I'll always remember your delusional, idiotic self. Um, you know, I, I really don't have anything to say to him. Mike, just watch down on us, buddy, and watch us enjoy football and have some knowledge. And, uh, you know, that's it, Mike. Mike, you suck. You're a terrible person. Oh, God. I, welcome I, to – Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Nova was great. Simon Dean was great. Mike Bucci, you suck. There's only one Bucci brother that's over, and that's Donnie B, bro. Because if Donnie B didn't have a promotion, your ass wouldn't have been working, bro. And that's it. Wow. <laughs> Damn. No. As far as next year, Mike, with the podcast, thanks for trying out, but you cut because you suck. <laughs> on that note, Raleigh, boys, a round of applause for Raleigh. <laughs> Appreciate you, oh, Thank you, Stallion. <laughs> we'll be in touch. Oh, wow. How great is Raleigh? Oh, wow. I just can't so great. Had a place on him, yeah. for those who didn't see. Oh, that well, that was our funny. semi. That was our funeral for a friend. Uh, I do have one question here. It is from Pete from Long Branch, and his question is. Donnie, growing up as kids, was Mike Bucci ever correct when anything he ever had to bet on is in his entire life? And as a shoot, I have to say no. I can't remember <laughs> one time ever where he was ever right about a bet. I don't know. Uh, got me. I, I, I can't think of it. Uh, I'm just, another oh one. Can I just say real quick? Me in the back seats are marks for your brother. He's a wrestling genius and a wrestling god, and we have nothing but respect for him. That being said, that was a funny segment. <laughs> you guys are good. <laughs> Listen, Nova was one of the most talented. Nova was Mike was one of the most talented wrestlers ever yeah. on the East Coast tri-state area. He deserved better in the business. He should have been over more. It wasn't his fault. He was probably ten or fifteen years ahead of his time. He'd be in the mix mm -hmm. right now with Seth Rollins and all those guys. He'd be keeping pace with them. He was an innovator. This has nothing to do with that. I can, I'm can. i not mentally ill. I can separate Mike Bucci, Nova, the performer, from this crazed megalomaniac who's never been right about a sporting event his entire life. I mean, more people <laughs> should be able to do that. I mean, Everyone was waiting for this to just be settled on, on the Spokecast. I mean, your brotherly rivalry yeah, with the football thing. is just... And, he, and is, for full disclosure, awesome. guys, Mike was invited to be on here tonight. And he said he mm -hmm. wasn't coming on here. He didn't want <laughs> so that I just want that to be known. He was, and I have the proof. He was invited to be on this show tonight. Um, and I have one more question from this is Kent and Little Egg or a little, oh, Egg no. Harbor Township. Kent oh, no. from Egg Harbor Township. Yeah, sure. If it is. you had, if you had to pick a sentence to put on Nova's tombstone, what would it be? <laughs> Hold on, want me to put the banner back up for you? <laughs> yeah, the tombstone. Mm -hmm. I, was gonna, I would say that here lies Mike Bucci's NFL season. Yeah, rip Mike Bucci 2023 <laughs> to 2024 NFL season prediction. That I mean, I would just print out that and put it on the tombstone. Funeral for a friend. Either oh. that or here lies a guy who's never been right about a thing in his entire life. That's it. I love how he's he's under the dirt, but he's also above ground in the same photo. <laughs> What? Oh, That's, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it installed it. It's, it's, it's installed as a head on the tombstone. Like it's That a is a shout out to Team B, who we will not disclose their identities. I have a crack team of commandos. It's kind of like instead of the A team, I have the B team. My B team is a crack little crew of commandos that make all this stuff for me. And uh, they're awesome. I love them dearly. They know who they are. And whenever you need stuff like this, it gets generated. So uh, there you go. The perks of being Donnie B. You got your own B team. Get it? Ha ha. Ain't bragging if it. you're telling the truth, brother. Amen, well, congratulations brother. on being right on your prediction. And I Thank sincerely you. hope that you're wrong about your prediction for next yeah. season. I know. I did make money. One of my I can't do it again. And to the Graysons, John, one of the, I'm going to teach you something now. You, three things you never discuss publicly. You never discuss religion. You never discuss politics, and you never discuss how much you either win or lose when it comes to gambling. So I will just say this. I won money yesterday. <laughs> and we'll just leave it at that. Donnie B. Dollar, was dollar very bill, happy. <laughs> very happy at around 11 mm -hmm. p.m. last night. There you go. So that's that. It's all you need to know. Oh, all right.
you want to switch gears, guys? We have a special guest. Yes, we're excited Let's for this. Get him in here from GCW, the man, MLJ. What's up, brother? There he is. Yo, what up? What up? How's yes. everybody doing tonight? What's up, hey, yo, bro? What's up? What's up? So first, we got to say, how do you say your first name perfectly? Uh, Emil. It's like Emily without the Y. Emil. Got yeah, it. Yeah. Just so. Yeah. And you're a fan of Emil. All money is legal. Yeah, love them. The best. So Emil, Emil likes Emil. I got it now. That's what I was getting confused with. Yes. Brother. Thanks for clearing it up. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually the match. It made me uh, hit you up. I was like, oh, right. oh, you you got a uh, half of all money is legal. I need to be there. Also, yeah. <laughs> might as well, like, see if I can work. Hey. Fuck yeah. Hey, like, you're who do I talent. hit up? I'm yeah. like, yo, who do I hit up? And Cashmere's like, yo, it's me. Yeah, you're there, bro. <laughs> yeah, we go oh, oh, okay. I, when I figured out how far we go back, I was stunned, bro. You got to just tell people a little bit about yourself and, and what you do. And and I just want to real quick say that you are the most unconventional ring announcer I've ever met. And it's refreshing and it's wonderful and it is working. So congratulations. But go, bro. Thank you. Uh, I first uh, started uh, working shows in late 2008 started at force one pro wrestling uh and then through got went through like czw jersey all pro uh and uh eventually um now game changer wrestling uh, and going all over the place with that and uh brett lauderdale and uh danny demonto at the time they were the ones who allowed me to start utilizing this unconventional sound just kind of let me be me uh, I remember it was like one show. It was um, it was when Nick Gage wrestled uh, Matt Riddle, and I pulled up. I thought I was just doing commentary, so you know I'm hanging out, partying in the in the parking lot as one does. And then like I walk in, and then they're like, "Oh, you need to ring announce." I'm like, "What?" It's like ten minutes before the show. I had, I didn't even know what the card was. I was just like there, uh, <laughs> and um. I was like, oh, I don't have anything to wear. Like, I just had, like, I was wearing like some sort of like Bam Bam Bigelow shirt with like a WWF <laughs> logo hat, like torn jeans, like just like regular, like what I regularly wear. And then Brett is just like, oh, that's cool. Be you. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. And that was actually the first day, like, uh, MDK all fucking day. That's actually the first time that was ever said <laughs> so like right from jump uh brett kind of like it changed the game you know like let me just kind of freestyle and be myself out there and uh the rest is history really but uh to what uh johnny was talking about yeah there's like photos of me enjoying backseat boys matches in 1999 um uh at outlaws of wrestling at Coral Luzo shows, um, trying to think like early CZW, like, but I wasn't there. I was just getting the tapes and whatnot. Uh, Ring of Honor, I was there mm -hmm. for, for those. But, um, but Emil, yeah, did you know crazy. that Donnie? Did you know Donnie used to run Dennis Carluzzo shows? Um, years later, years yeah. later, I, I yeah. uh, through uh, mostly through conversations that I've had with uh with mr donnie b uh in in the recent i guess what year or so yeah man we just started talking on on the twitter verse which i'm yeah twitter and uh, and the facebook yeah. message and you know just like chopping it up and um but yeah like like they, like i remember seeing you guys back in like 98 99 at outlaws of wrestling at the tropicana casino like tearing it up Yep. Back in the day, bro. I knew, I knew, I knew you, you know what I mean? But I was like trying to place it. And then when you told me that I, I was just amazed, I thought for you've only been doing it since 08, bro, for real. I working since 08, but like I was around it, like PW, I would be going to PWU shows. Right. Um, And that, like, I was, I was at PWU. I was at CZW. I was basically anything that would run, uh, 
like in the arena or right in South Jersey. Mm-hmm. You know, it's how I found out about. I just, you know, I, I remember finding out about Force One the day of its first show, and not like because I went on this like website that had a list of like every wrestling event that was like taking place that day or yep. whatever. And I was like, oh, there's something Egg Harbor City. Okay, I'll go to that. And I was just trying to find anything that I could go to, even like NWA Cyberspace, Billy Firehawk yeah. shows. I yeah. was Firehawk and uh, my boy Derek Gordon. Yeah, like yep. I was I was going to those, like whatever I could find. I was just going to anything. So I was like always in the crowd, <laughs> like always there. And then uh it, it's funny, like when I first started working for Force One, uh White Lotus says to me, he's like, you know, you're he's like, Emil, you're allowed to be a mark. Everybody's seen you all over, everybody's like in the front row of everybody's show in this area for the last like however many years. He's like, People know who you are, you're allowed to be a mark. I'm like, okay, and I just ran with it, like it's my gimmick like oh i actually like wrestling imagine that i can only imagine how many times we must have walked past each other in the crowd at ring of honor ccw pw all these things like all those shows that's it's a very similar path crazy because i started ring announcing in late 08 to uh november of 08 on that and it's interesting because me too november of 08 and also because somebody didn't show up so I feel I feel like every ring announcer ever has that story of like they got thrown in to just do it and like oh that's, I guess I'm a ring announcer now. Yes, ex- that's exactly it. It wasn't my first show. It was uh, I had been doing commentary was my first thing because uh, I happened to tell I happened to uh, wait on John Solo and his family. Do you guys remember John Solo? I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. So he w- lived local to me. Uh, and I wound up waiting on him and his family at a TGI Fridays the day after the first Force One show. I heard him talking about it, and I was like, oh, I'm going to try to get a better tip and talk to this man about this show <laughs> that he was seemingly in on. Uh, and then from there, like, uh, every time they came to the restaurant, they would ask for me, and i talk to him. Oh, I want to do commentary okay cool and then like that started like a year and a half thing of me just like oh yeah maybe i'll try it one day and i show up to his show and he's like yeah uh do you still want to do commentary i was like yeah sure he's like good you're on match number four i was like what okay i will do commentary on breaker morant versus patch i will do that <laughs> uh and, and, and and it was awesome. Uh, but then after, uh, I guess, like a year and a half, I showed up to the February 2010 show. Uh, John Solo was supposed to ring announce, and uh, he was not there, and uh, never to be seen or heard from again there. Uh, <laughs> and then they were like, Emil, you, you know what you're doing. You you do it. I'm, okay. Uh because at that time I was only already the commissioner and commentator, so why not add another role? <laughs> why not? Right. <laughs> oh, wow. Multi. Now here we are, all these years later, where uh, I know because of somebody who is a roommate of mine who's traveling the world with you every single weekend. Like, yes. how did you ever see this happening? Where like you're on flights every weekend, and like how many overseas tours now? Uh, two. I went overseas twice uh, to UK once and to Japan once. And to answer the first question, hell no, dude. Like, I never imagined this. Like, never, ever. Like, it's fantasy land, honestly. Um, you make it look easy, bro. That's the trick, I think, is you're making it look easy. Because I'm having the time of my life. Like That's, that's it, right? So that's yeah, a key to like, anybody like uh, the like the, yeah. working in hockey the amount of places i got to go even i was talking with jp and tommy about this in buffalo a couple weeks ago like going to alaska with hockey and stuff like the yeah, things that so like pick something that's going to take you around the world 
we've all talked about yeah. places that we've all been and stuff. You have got the Barbados stories and all that. Like, mm -hmm. it's that's that's the key in life. Get gets so you don't have to pay for trips. You, you just get to go on vacation for work. Like yeah. that's that's the ticket. And then when you yeah. like get like the frequent flyers for all these things and rack up those points, you're able yes. to take your own vacations. Like on top of that, it's great. Uh, I, I I really like it's uh, and, and and the best part about it is really like no matter what city we go to, whether we've been there before or we're there for the first time, like everybody is just so appreciative that we come there and that we're doing our thing and they know all of us and they um yeah it, it's it's so like when people halfway across the world know who you are like mm. that's really surreal yeah like and then like and they're coming up and like just ask for pictures and autographs and stuff and it's like like and then i look at it, it's like damn like I'm just the ring announcer. Like the, they must think these wrestlers are like the coolest wrestlers ever, which means I'm doing my job right. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Every, if 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 I'm as over as I am, that must mean everybody else is super over. You have a you great know, locker room, dude. A great crew of guys that you can depend on. You know, I remember when yes. I used to be a pitcher. I used to be a pitcher in baseball, and they used to say, "You don't have to strike everyone out. You got a whole team behind you. They got your back." And uh, and that's kind of how it is with you as the ring announcer, right? Yeah, like it, I I feel like uh, everybody being as good as they are and on point and like in sync, like because like we travel enough, like like our core group is pretty much together every show like it's it's rare when you don't have like you don't have like three or four main people on one show like that's super rare like even for like even the jersey jacob where it's like a specialized tournament show they still had most of our main roster in that um so that said, like everybody kind of knows what everybody does. Um, it, like we're kind of like in a groove right now. And um, definitely when, yeah, when, when I know everybody's hitting, like it makes my job easy because like, I know, like, I know the fans are going to be excited at the beginning of the show because it, that's just always how it works. But like that first match hits and it and it bangs and the second match goes crazy third match like it and then I feed off the fans the wrestlers feed off of the fans like I feed off of them they feed off of me like it's all like one yeah. circle that all builds on itself throughout the show but like everybody being so good at their job you know from production to referees to wrestlers that like it makes my job so much easier <laughs> because oh, yeah. the fans are getting a great show so it's easy for me to keep the fans invested <laughs> mm -hmm. you know like yeah it, it's it's a, like i don't even consider it work they say yeah. oh great job out there I'm, oh it's not a job yeah Just having fun and we're so, dude, we are honored and happy to have you honestly like we're thrilled like, i can't wait i didn't i would have hit you up Six months ago, if I didn't know you took, I didn't know you even took other bookings, to be honest with you. I just thought you hung out at shows if you were there, whatever. So it didn't even yeah, occur it's, to me. It, it's, it's rare anymore, like, because GC, uh, I'm so busy with GCW. Yeah. I don't want to, like, right. That's, I don't want to, like, commit to one place and be like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, I have to, like, I, unfortunately, I have to do that yeah. uh, sometimes. And to, in order to like not have that happen, I, I'm just kind of real. Yeah. And we run Sundays. I, yeah, so Sundays and, is a decent day probably for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so I, I just kind of lay low. And when I can, I like hit somebody up. That's why, like, like when, when I hit you up, I didn't even know like who the contact person was. No, I know. Like, I could tell. Yeah, you I knew know, you weren't working me. Like, I, I knew you were being honest. Yeah, um, no. Like, and I, I didn't no mean clue. for that to even 
come up on the air and make it look like you asked me for work. Cause like I said, I've been no. trying to get you, I've been trying to get you for months. <laughs> so it, it worked out great. Um, of course, like I hear that from a lot of people, like they're like, Oh, yeah. like you can. I'm like, yeah. Like the, the only, like I reach out when I can because sure. like, it, it's like the same way with like uh super crazy out of uh Gloucester. Right. right. Yeah. Like, I I ask them like what their dates are. I'm like, oh, I can do this one or that one. Sure. I can't do all of them. I'm like I because they run. Unfortunately, they run a lot of times what we do. Yeah. But, like so when I can, when I can, uh, I will. Like I I just hate. Uh, I I don't want to uh, like make the obligation and then take it away. Understood. Oh, yeah. good. Yo, I do have a quick question for you. I wouldn't. I gotta ask you. You said you were at the J Cup. Did you see? Jordan Oliver versus Masha main event. Oh yeah. Tell me about it. I didn't get to see it. How was it? Oh, uh, it was it was good, really good, like culmination of the tournament. You know, you could see the wear and tear and work that they both put in through the not just uh I mean Saturday having the three matches was enough for each of them, but then you add in the fact that they each had, you know, Jordan had a banger match with Griffin on Friday and mm -hmm. Masha and Doris was crazy too. So like they both had uh, a really, uh, Good. really hard night at the office, but yeah. they Plus still... jet lag, bro. Jet lag probably came into it too. So he was Superman in those. Yeah. Both of them were Superman. I was there yeah. last year. I watched it from the crowd last year and I was amazed at the work rate and, and everything. And from what I saw in the pictures from last year, this year is like a big jump in the crowd and the atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, we packed it in uh this year. Like it was a noticeable difference over last year. And uh yeah, I don't I don't know whether it's the fact that uh you know, just like uh people want to see like that style of tournament, or we just had the right mix of guys, or you know, product is hot. We had the astronauts come in from Japan that probably yep. had uh yep. a lot to do with it. Um yep. And you, you guys know, have Ito. Above. <laughs> you got Ito yeah. and Yamakawa coming, uh, not Yamakawa, Kobayashi coming Kobayashi in. Kobayashi and Ito coming in. Uh, Yo, March let me tell you something, bro. I, I defended the Big Japan Junior title against Ito in Kawasaki Gym, brother. Kawasaki Stadium uh, in like 01. So awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now I see him. Yeah, he's such a great guy. And Kobayashi looks exactly the same. He hasn't aged. No. He look the same. Like, I remember working with on on a geez what TOD was it some tournament of death about 10 12 years ago whatever it was and he looks like he's the exact same yep exact yeah. same uh, I will and say man let me jump in for a second I want to say that the thing I love about Emil and I've only known him for a short time just listening to him man you can tell that this motherfucker loves, loves. pro wrestling. Loves. And mm -hmm. that's Sharks. when people ask me about the indies and the NIL program with the athletes and all that. Now, the reason that shit's never going to work long term is because you don't get a guy like Emil. You're going to get your stars and stuff like this from the indies. There's some kid right now who might be in that audience on Sunday who's the next Emil or the next Johnny or JP or Tommy that 10, 15 years from now is going to talk just like he was about going to the Carluzzo shows or the CCW yeah. shows. And that's, that's the, this dude is an old soul, even though he's a young guy. That's what I like about him, man. He's a student of the game. And what works about him, let's say we put him in a suit, give him contact lenses, tell him to shave and put him out there. He's going to be Justin Roberts light, or there can never be another Fink or Samantha Roberts. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, What's so cool about and what Brett had the foresight to do, in my opinion, and exactly what I would have done, they took what he was and put him in, they took a square peg and put it in a round hole, and it worked, rather than try to change what he was to what they were doing. That's the sign of a smart promoter. If you can't, you're never going to compete with the WWE, so you can't be better then. You don't want to be less than, so you have to be different then. And in my honest opinion, if an NXT goes to CW Network next year, or if Tony Khan wanted to really do something different with ROH or even Collision, this is the guy right here. And I'm not blowing his horn right here on the, but this is the guy right here that I would say this is who I'm gonna have as my flagship announcer because the second he opens his mouth and you see him and he talks, 
you know that you're going to see something different. So that's what I would do. Like, especially with ROH, I think he'd be a great fit or collision or rampage. Cause when you turn it on, you see the same guys, they're all copycatting Michael, Gary, Michael Capetta or Justin Roberts. These guys are great. But if you want something that screams 2024 or future or different, then it's right there, man. And I think that was a Facts. fucking stroke of genius by Brett doing that, dude. I, I'm a huge fan of what he brings to the table. And what's cool about him is from a promoter's point of view, if he was, if I was promoting and he was working on my show, I know all I'd have to do is say, Emil, here's the lineup. Take it from there. And he would go to all the talents. He'd get everything right. I wouldn't have to revisit that and hold his hand the entire night because he loves this so much. He's going to make sure everything is done to perfection. I can tell that. And I've never worked with him. I have. This is the first time we really talked on air live and in person each other. But I guarantee you everything I just said is the truth. And it's what Brett thought too. And I'm telling you, Tony Khan, Triple H, even Demore, the guys at TNA, if you wind up buying it, whoever, this guy, right? I'm not trying to poach Brett's talent. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just <laughs> saying, if if you guys are really looking for something to jumpstart your companies or make something a little different, it's right there in the lower left corner, dude. It's literally there's only one Emil in the United States. That's it. It's right there. Yeah, there's a, a million indie guys out there, but there's only one of him. And I would scoop brother up as fast as I could, man. I would do that in a heartbeat. That's it. That's it. Wow. There you go, brother. Wow. You see that? Now, was this that worth was... your time? You, you come on, you get put over. That was, <laughs> that was systematic. That was incredible. Thank you so much for that. I, I genuinely appreciate that. Uh, it's all true, bro. One thing about yeah. Donnie B, I'll say a lot of shit, but I never lie. I never tell, I never tell anybody. And I, I'll tell you shit you might not want to hear, but it's always the truth. I never blow anybody up or put them over unless it's the truth. If you were the shits, I'd tell you. I would tell you off air, but I think <laughs> yeah, you're awesome. You, would, you bring yeah. something you. different to the table. And like I said, bro, if I was a promoter in the United States with a company looking to make a jump or make something different, you would be my, one of my first hires. Thank That's you it. so much. Uh, Long live Emil. Appreciate that. Emil, Thank this you so uh, much, Sunday, man. you're you're going to be announcing, I mean, guys like Homicide and Zandig and yes. these guys and stuff. Um, and I, I know from like, you're talking about like appreciating loving pro wrestling and stuff like that like i can think of early days ring announcing and stuff where standing in the ring you got the microphone i'm just like am i really getting to ring announce this person like there are those yeah. moments so i'm Absolutely. just curious like who's the one person that was like the coolest in that moment that you were getting to announce them to the ring um i'm gonna probably cheat and go two two answers and they both happened uh during last year's collective uh number one uh would have to be uh junakiyama it's like what uh, right big big fan of the uh the you know they say four pillars but that doesn't include akiyama so that's messed up i always considered him equal level playing field with uh the uh, four you know um and and for me that that was incredible uh, also, uh, going into that show, uh, going into that weekend, I was under the assumption that I think it was, uh, I think it was Melissa Santos. I think her name is, um, Brian Cage's wife, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I believe she was originally set to ring announce for the world on Lucha, I believe, but that didn't happen. So I wound up doing that. So I wound up uh, getting to also ring announce for uh, Negro Casas. Like what? Uh, that that's insane because uh, the like he's of that style of lucha libre that I I really enjoy, um, and and also he competed in Japan too. Like he's one of the like that. Like I knew I was gonna like uh, do commentary for his match. I was already psyched for that, but getting to actually uh introduce him to a very crowded room full of people is uh very good uh bro you know uh, uh, you... Omita, like <laughs> that was nuts yes wow. and and it's funny like just a couple not last weekend but the weekend before we were in los angeles and i i did um we they did uh matt cardona and nick nemeth uh, formerly Dolph Ziggler and uh, my 
young broadcast colleague. Today is his birthday, Jordan Castle. Happy birthday to Jordan Castle. Happy birthday, Jordan. Happy birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. Uh, he was so Happy excited birthday. to do commentary for uh, Dolph Ziggler and Zack Ryder. It was his, you know, that's yeah. from his era. And like me, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Whatever. Like, I have no real, like, emotional connection to it. But the second, pretty much, that you drop a graphic featuring Lucky 13 versus K Murda, I'm like, <laughs> yes, I need to be there. <laughs> well, what, like, that's, what about, that's me. What about Sasuke? Did you announce him? <clears throat> oh, yes. That was the first time I ever got to do Sasuke this weekend. I, I have been at shows that's that crazy. he was at, but I never got to... Uh, uh, and uh, introduce him. Uh, so that was really cool. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. I'm marked for that. When I saw the clip of him and Wayne and Wayne doing his thing, that was it was cool, man. It was awesome. I got a little bit yeah. of chills. Yeah, yeah. Nick Wayne hitting a Sasuke special against yeah. Sasuke. Yeah. 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 Picture what? perfect too. <laughs> Nick yes. Wayne getting veins in his shoulders now, dude. He's working out. I love seeing it, man. He's gonna be the shit. He's already the shit. Yeah, but just imagine when he actually grows up, like That's when he what fills I mean. out, like. He's only he's still only 18, not 19, even 19 maybe, yet. Like, like that, yeah. He's yeah, still yeah. got Great some dude. growing to do. Great dude, man, too. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's like it's like uh when you look at Jordan Oliver when he was like 18 years old. Yeah. And now and now how he's like filled out and gotten a lot bigger. Yep. You know, learned how to eat breakfast, big That's breakfast, great. they say, right? That's right. That's right. yeah. Dude, he it's almost looks like meal. he should be in the NBA. When I saw him standing nose to nose with Griffin, Jordan's got like two or three inches. He's, He's tall. tall as hell. Yeah. yeah, he is. Yeah. And um, did you see he was wearing the uh, uh, acid pants? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I talked yeah. to him. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Good. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that. I'll he busted him out. Yeah. He's come a long way, man. That kid. I'll make a bold prediction right now. I think within the next three to five years, Jordan Oliver will be to to the United States what Will Ospreay was to the UK. Mm. I think he has that kind of potential. I could see it. That guy that's on everybody's lips and he's the guy. I think Jordan Oliver could be the United States version of Will Ospreay. I really do. I mean, he certainly got the drive and determination. I I was uh, there for his first ever real match at a SWF show. Oh, yes. Yep. Wow. Rob Fury. Yeah. I uh, had the pleasure, yes, sir. I, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I loved I loved working SWF shows. I uh they weren't always the best wrestling shows, but I always had a good time. That's it. They're there fun. That's, that's it. all that matters. I, I, I know a lot of people who got their start there, so that's all that matters. Yes. It's a platform, bro. You know, it, it, and and in like 2016, 2017, something like that. Dude was running a lot. Like you, he, he was, ran a lot. Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. You, you can get like some solid reps in. Nice. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was a good way yeah. to fill your counter up, bro. Just take a fury booking and just do it up, bro. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Right in Jersey like, too. Right in Jersey. Can't yes. be. Yeah. Yep. I I loved yeah. it. Like I I loved working work working for those. Um, yeah. But yeah, oh, it's yeah. just funny to see the evolution. You know, from his mm-hmm. first yep. match with Coco Beware. Uh, wow. to, yeah, he was in a tag match opposite with Coco Beware. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it was really cool. That is crazy. I, I, I remember being in the locker room asking Coco Beware about the time when he beat up that jobber on Memphis TV real bad. You guys know about that? <laughs> yeah, of course. The, the, the masked jobber, he beat the shit out. Oh, uh, <laughs> that was incredible. He, I, I asked him, he's like, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I must have been in a bad mood. I like, yeah, Emil, agree, dude. Emil, you're gonna love this story. Emil loves old '90s stories. I always told him he would have given anything to be in the car with us, like driving with Nova and Ratchet and all of them. Yeah. So we worked. It was Ratchet against Coco Beware for Dennis uh-huh. Carluzzo. I want to say it was either Camden. I forget what school it was. Ratchet versus Coco. So yeah. I said to Ratchet, oh, "I got a great idea, man." When we get out there on the microphone, we'll make fun of Frankie because he didn't have the bird. So I said, oh, we'll say that we killed the bird and we we ate him or some shit. I said, I have a better idea. Around the corner, there was a KFC. So I said, I'll go get a bucket. of Johnny knows where this is going. I said, I'll get a bucket of KFC. We'll go in the ring. We won't tell him. It'll be great. It'll be a big surprise. 
We'll go in the ring. We'll start eating the KFC, and we'll say that it's Frankie. Well, what I didn't take into account is that the audience was predominantly African. Oh, no. <laughs> so we go oh, in the no. ring with a bucket of KFC oh, and no. start eating it in front of Coco Beware. <laughs> and he's looking at us like, I what the fuck are these two doing? <laughs> and I said, oh, this was Frankie. We're eating him and this and that. And it, as the words are coming out of my mouth, I'm looking around going, uh-oh. <laughs> so then he proceeded to beat the shit out of And afterwards, we all laughed about it. But it was one of those moments where it hit me like a ton of bricks like... I should have told him beforehand what we were doing. So I learned a valuable yeah. lesson. Cue the talent in. A I was making a surprise so we could get a pop from him to pop right. the boys. But lo and behold, yeah, bro, that's a 100% true story. The fr See, Frankie, yeah, I, oh, Frankie wow. always did look delicious, though, Donnie. So it's okay. Bucket of KFC in the middle of the ring eating it, saying it was Frankie. And I was like, uh-oh. See, I thought I see. I thought you were going to say it was like right after like Frankie died. Or something. That's what I thought at first. Like, no. but then putting two and two together is like, oh, that's bad. Yeah, I think and they I just keep replacing. Yeah, don't they, that's Frankie? Like Shamu, we're on, we're on like the eighth Frankie <laughs> by now, right? Yeah, there's more. <laughs> I don't know what there's more of Frankies or Doinks or Shamu. Yeah, <laughs> Shamu's died a dozen times. I'm a member of the mm. Doink Club. I was Doink for Dennis a few times. I'm that's right, that. you were I was. in sneakers. Yeah. Doink, I worked Lupus in the main event in West Virginia, the main event of a sold show for Carluzzo because somebody didn't show up. He had me against Lupus. <laughs> I was fucking Doink in the main event against Lupus. There was about 18 people in the crowd. It was horrendous. It was awful. <laughs> is, there, is, there, is there a tape of this? I, there I might be. It. Mark Carluzzo might have it, but it was – I'm in the Doink I, Club. I need to talk to Mark. That's the – Yeah, I, absolutely. That'd be like, over. I, like, oh. Uh, like he's just got the treasure. That's he does. Need to find he has that a lot of the treasures out there. Oh man, <laughs> need it. This was need awesome. it. Like, so much uh, fun tonight, guys. Yeah, dude. So much fun. Emil, yeah. Emil, thank you so much, man. Anytime you want to stop on, bro, you just let us know. We're always chilling. Yeah, plug what GCW is yeah. yeah. doing. Where are you guys next? Give us a quick plug for the upcoming schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, next show is Friday, February twenty third. We will be back in Dallas for the first time in a. I think maybe at, at least a year and a half. Um, so it's been a while since we've been back there. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, the weekend after that, uh, we are, we have St. Louis and Indianapolis, uh, the first and second of March respectively. Uh, and then following that, we talked about it earlier, the Atlantic city weekend, uh, March 9th and 10th. Uh, at the showboat in Atlantic City featuring uh, Ryuji Ito and Abdullah Kobayashi. Uh, and uh, where are we? We Oh, God. Collect I know right the answer to this. Is. But there's somewhere in between. Uh, oh, yes. Of yeah, course. How could I yeah. forget? How could I oh, forget? Oh, right. Oh, yes. Uh, Detroit on the 23rd. And then finally... Uh, upstate New York, March 24th, Rochester. Yeah, it's um, a great city. That's going to be a very special show for uh, a lot of people, especially Brett. I'm very happy that he's getting to do this. Yeah. I'm very happy that he is uh, booking Colin Delaney, Cheech, and Cloudy. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. that, yeah. That makes all me seem so low. I've yeah. Shout out to them. Guys. Yes, I like, yeah. you know, because like I, when when I was going to uh, indie shows all the time back in like 06, 07, Cheech, I, Cheech was like my guy. He would always find cool ways to do stuff. And that's mm -hmm. like I, when I watch wrestling, I see dudes doing stuff in a cool way is different. I'm like, I love this guy. Uh, so Cheech was always a guy that I was like into. And uh, now we finally get a chance to see him in a GCW ring. I'm sure it's mm -hmm. going to be great. I don't know what the match is going to be, but uh, I'm excited. He's a that. DeVito and Luke. He's a Carnage Crusader. Yeah, he's a yeah. he's a Newberg yeah. guy, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, near yeah. Yeah. where yeah. Jordan's from, I believe. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, and yeah. uh, then um, the Collective, mm -hmm. which is shaping up to be, yo, Philly's going to be crazy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I mean, like, imagine living in the city that week. That week. 
Oh, it, it, like if, if you're if you're a fan of of wrestling for a week, you are living in heaven. Right. Like, but if you're uh, not, if I just lived in the city not. and didn't like wrestling, I'd get the hell out of the city for the week. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it's gonna it's be it's gonna be very very busy with uh, people Crazy. that don't know Damn what they're right. doing. And and hopefully we have we have be Carnage Cruise. We have Carnage Cruise last match April seventh at Spo, and that'll be Devito's wow. last match ever. Except he's doing like two matches in Florida, but that's it. He's he's done wow. forever. And my God, he goes back to job matches in WWE Before, when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. 30, 30 plus. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we have the like honor. 20, I told him. I said, "Yo." I said it's like it's like my boys getting married, and I get to throw him. We get to throw him a sick bachelor party. Like we're gonna show Going him, away. bro. Seriously, like you know, and, and you know your deal. If, if Hall of Fame's over in time and you can make it, you're there. Done yeah. always. Um, but that's gonna be a special night for everybody. Um, and and it's gonna start with that Hall of Fame. I'm sure we'll talk about that eventually. But uh, yeah, let's yeah. get him back on here. Definitely yeah, before the yeah. collective. Oh, yeah. I would say sometime in March. Okay. Let's get him back on here. Yeah. Even if I'm not around one night, let him come on and guest host. Good deal. I'm down. Sure. Down. Right, Absolutely. Brother. Thank cool. you. Yes. Absolutely. Well, Thank you so much, fun, guys. guys. Hell Thank yeah. you, Emil. Yeah. Yeah. Thank this you. This was a fun episode. Very, yes, fun. very fun episode. Much appreciate yeah. it. Thank, Thank you, you guys so me. much, man. Everybody have a great night and a great week. And uh, why don't we end with the uh, – I'm going to end with the Killdozer thing. Let's watch this. We love yeah. watching this. Yep. See you guys. Hell God bless. Yeah. Peace.